Top 10 embarrassing King Charles moments that made the public cringe. Number 10, awkward encounter. King Charles and Liz Truss had a rather awkward greeting at the first weekly audience, which is essentially a brief but entirely private conversation between the monarch and PM each week. The awkward exchange between the two has been captured on camera and was being shared on Twitter for obvious reasons. In the video, we see them enter through the imperial entryways flanked by royal residence staff. And after that, the prime minister makes a bow and starts to step forward to shake the king's hand. Tress said, your majesty, great to see you again. However, Charles responded in a manner that may have been unexpected. Back again, Tress responded, well, it's a great pleasure to the monarch's likely joking comment. The king could then be heard to say, dear oh dear, anyway. Turns out Charles can be shady too. Charles had also announced he would not be attending COP27 in Egypt after Truss supposedly objected to the monarch making an appearance at the International Climate Change Summit. The BBC has since reported that it was a mutual decision with mutual friendship and respect. There was agreement that the king would not attend a Buckingham Palace spokesperson claimed. However, Twitter users have found humor in the awkward moment. Lecturer in diplomacy at Oxford University. Jennifer Cassidy described it as a scene straight from The Office. Political awkwardness and unintentional comedy at its finest. On to number nine, the royal affair. This one is no big secret. The Princess of Wales was very much aware of Charles cheating on her with Camilla. Pretty awkward. His mistress at the time was regarded as a villain long before Princess Diana and Charles filed for divorce. Additionally, she was resented up until the Princess of Wales' untimely passing in 97. The Duchess of Cornwall was not specifically held accountable for Princess Diana's unlucky passing, but after Diana's passing in the car accident, they did, however, discover a newfound hatred for her greatest foe. And because of that hatred, Camilla had to hide for months as the situation escalated. If Camilla had never gotten herself in this mess with Charles, being one of the most hated royals would never have been something she'd have to worry about. But it makes you question, if he cheated on Diana, who knows if he's cheated on Camilla? and was able to successfully hide it from her, even though he failed to do so from Diana. Number eight, the palace staff. The then Prince of Wales affair with the Duchess of Cornwall, which occurred while Charles was married to Diana, is well known to everyone. And it's safe to assume that some members of the royal family are dissatisfied with the fact that their affair is getting screen time on Netflix's The Crown season four, making it by far one of the biggest royal relationship scandals. In a well-known interview with News of the World in 1995, the prince's valet Ken Stronach shared shocking details about Charles's affair. He was even fired because of his breach of confidentiality. Stronach claimed at the time that he scrubbed grass stains from Charles's pajamas after the prince would sneak out of bed in the middle of the night to meet with Camilla. Charles even made sure his staff made his bed look like he had slept there by ruffling it up. It was very elaborate, but awkward. No one was fooled. Number seven, jealousy. He had his first significant encounter with disapproving public opinion during his marriage with Diana. Archival footage of the couple touring Australia shows how jealous he was of how much popular she was. Diana confirmed that Charles envied the public's devotion to his wife in her Explosive 95 interview with Martin Bashir. In her words, the pressure on both of us as a couple with the media was phenomenal and misunderstood by a great many people. We'd be going around for Australia, for instance, and all you could hear was, oh, she's on the other side, with Diana clarifying that the waiting crowds were expressing their disappointment that Charles was closer to them rather than Diana. Awkward. Number six, Tampon Gate. One of the worst kept secrets of the royal family was Charles's extramarital affair with his now wife and queen, Camilla. After Charles and Diana formally announced a separation in 92, a transcript of a phone call between Charles and Camilla from 89 leaked to the media, with the whole incident being referred to as Camilla Gate. The transcript revealed some rather awkward and bizarrely erotic details in the secret relationship. Charles starts off with the usual banter of how he cannot live without her, but then progressed towards getting into her pants. Camilla jokingly replied, asking him if he would turn into her knickers, and then came the iconic answer from Charles, into a tampon, that would be nice. I don't know about that, Charles. But anyway, number five, cheating scandals. The royal scandals aren't complete with a little sprinkle of cheating. The then prince infamously had an affair with Camilla while married to Diana, and if you're unfamiliar with the story, the late princess had known about the affair. 
and even had affairs of her own, but the lack of attention she was getting from her husband, also the father of Harry and William, was upsetting for her. After the transcript of a phone call between Charles and Camilla was leaked, which, side note, is very invasive, it revealed their affair because of how sexual the phone call was and was later named, as we just mentioned, the Tampon Gate Scandal. All the Princess Diana lovers also made it their mission to become extreme haters of Charles and even Camilla leaving the royal affair and the two involved very unpopular amongst many. The HBO documentary The Princess even insinuates that Charles may have been jealous of how much more popular Diana was than the prince himself. Yikes. That's a little embarrassing, but to be fair, the late princess was a true icon in more than one sense. I mean, her fashion choices are still being recreated in this day and age. Her impact was crazy. Now for Charles, don't beat me up, but I don't think we can say the same. Now although we aren't sure how the two sons feel about their parents' tragic ending, this family does seem to stick by each other because even when Prince Harry made the big boy decision to move out of the royal palace and lifestyle that came with it, as a father, Charles made sure his son and daughter-in-law had a comfortable start to their new life even though I'm sure he was unhappy with their decision. But number four, political scandals. King Charles had once been accused of attempting to influence the British government. In 2015, Charles received confidential papers on the inner workings of the British government that even elected ministers hadn't seen. How did he manage to get his hands on these papers? I have a feeling the excuse is that he was a part of the monarchy, but that's not a good enough reason. The Guardian received 27 memos dubbed the Black Spider Memos because it showed that the Royal Prince was somehow engaged in efforts about a range of issues from orders of military helicopters during the Iraq War to illegal fishing of the Patagonian toothfish. The controversy here is that some people believe it is normal for a royal to be involved in political affairs, while some think the members of the royal family should stay out of politics. But what do you think? Let me know in the comments section if you believe royals should be involved in politics or should just stick to the other royal duties that should steer clear of the political side. Number three, financial scandal. Another scandal for us to talk about. Charles allegedly accepted unofficial commissions from a previous Qatari prime minister for his charitable endeavors. Sounds fishy. Charles had also drawn criticism for his lavish spendings. The king has six homes on his estate, 11 secretaries, a large staff of servants, many expensive cars, and an annual salary of $20 million. I get that he's a king, but it's very interesting to know not only does he have this insane annual income, but on top of that, the whole family is extremely, and might I add, suspiciously secretive of their wealth. And where exactly are they possibly getting this amount of money? The taxpayers. For any theories, I wanna know what you think they could be doing for them to be able to afford this lifestyle. Number two, charity scandal. <sighs> Another scandal the king had been involved in. British police had launched an investigation with Charles's charity, The Prince's Trust, after reports of a cash for honor scheme. Earlier this year, accusations were made that a close aide, Michael Fawcett, offered a Saudi tycoon a knighthood in exchange for $2 million in donations. The investigation started after it was reported that Fawcett stepped down from his role as the chief executive of the foundation after being accused of misconduct. It was reported that tens of thousands of dollars were paid to make up for links to the prince. So basically, they were trying to bribe Fawcett by offering him a royal title in exchange for money which allegedly would be going towards their foundation. Suspicious. And finally, number one, not the people's king. As hard as it might be for Charles, a key part of being the king is winning over the people. And as overwhelming as his scandalous past has been, it's no surprise that there are still people who do not care for him as king. Many reports from royal sources have claimed that the newly appointed king has waited 70 years for this moment and wants to do as much as he can to become a progressive monarchy and also to win over the hearts of the nation as well as internationally. But because of their actions, media outlets and those who are engaged in the royal family drama, like us, have been diving more into the history of the royals, which let me tell you is not the most perfect or influential history in the world. Tainted by the countless controversies and scandals, the royal family has been catching a lot of heat about how they are not using their power for the greater good, but are rather abusing it while also remaining secretive. But what are your thoughts? Do you think the royal family is being smart about the power they have? Considering the scandals the king and other members have been a part of, is it acceptable for them to be the way they are portrayed in the media? Let me know what you think in the comments below. But that is all for today. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe for more Juicy Royal updates. And I'll catch you next time on The Rich Life.